Welcome to EPG Paatshala. My name is Asha Kothari Chaudhary and I'm a professor of English at Guwahati University. We are doing a course on Indian writing and English. The unit we are looking at is on drama and the module that we will be doing right now is on recreating the past, Girish Karnad's Tughlaq. Let us first introduce the playwright. He is a very well-known man, a very well-known man in terms of visibility in films, in the theatre scene of India and in terms of publishing. He is born in 1938 in Maharashtra and Karnad is one of the leading playwrights of contemporary India. He writes mainly in his own uh, adopted language of Kannada. History, myth, folklore and the native things that attract him most which he incorporates into his plays uh, with an absolutely modernist kind of input that comes from his Western education. Karnad has also worked as a director, an actor and a screenwriter for many Kannada movies such as Kadu, Kunuru, Hegaditti, Samskara, uh, Vamsavriksha and so on. He has also appeared in a number of Hindi films and done scripts for several such films as well. Among his best known plays are Hayavadana, Yayati, Tughlaq, The Fire and the Rain, Nagamandala, The Dreams of Tipu Sultan and Bali. He continues to write, so this obviously is an ongoing process. He is a comparatively prolific writer. This module, we will have us discussing in detail the play called Tughlaq, which is a historical play written by Girish Karnad. Originally, he, uh, he wrote it in Kannada and Tughlaq has been uh, translated into English by Karnad himself. And hence, we can use Tughlaq as a genre of Indian writing in English, given the fact that it is a self-translation. Is it a historical play? Is Tughlaq a historical idea that he borrows from the past and recreates in terms of a periodized theater? Let us look at this idea. When we talk about a historical play, it is based on historical narratives. It is set in any period of the past. Now the trend of writing historical plays was set by William Shakespeare with his plays like uh, Henry the Sixth or Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth. Richard III and so many other plays. Now in India, the emergence of historical plays seems to be a 19th century development. The growth of historical plays coincide with the growth of people's interest in the Indian past and history in general. Now thematically, the historical plays deal with widely diverse themes and characters taken from the past. And the trend of writing historical plays is noticeable among the Kannadigas, the Assamese, the Bengali and other such regional writers. The genre plays a major role in the rebirth of a political theatre in India. Girish Chandra Ghosh, often referred to as the father of Bengali theatre, wrote Siraj Daula in 1905, then he wrote Chhatrapati in 1908 and Mir Kasim came sometime in 1906, all of which were inspired by the Bengal partition and the movement that came by at that particular point of history in India. So when we think of Girish Karnad as a historical play playwright, what are we referring to? Girish Karnad makes a serious attempt to write plays on many historical themes. Some of these plays are Tughlaq, and the dreams of Tipu Sultan. Tughlaq is Girish Karnad's second play after Yayati. Tughlaq was published in 1964 in Kannada and it has been translated into Urdu, into English and many other Indian languages. It has also been performed profusely across the country. It refers of course to the historical figure of Muhammad bin Tughlaq who was one of the Mughal emperors who ruled India around the 14th century. He was the eldest son of Gyasuddin Tughlaq 
and ruled for 26 years in India from 1325 to 1351. He was popularly known as a man of ideas. Now, Tughlaq was one of the most brilliant kings to come into the throne of Delhi. However, despite his great and innovative ideas, his reign is marked by what we generally know as great failures. In the history of the creation of Tughlaq and the history of the idea of creating the play Tughlaq by Karnad, we find that there is a very interesting kind of criticism by Kirti Nath Koti on Kannada drama that no Kannada writer has made the effort to take up the historical event and therefore explore the new layers of truth that may arise out of them. Karnad found it a point to be contemplated and started reading Indian history extensively and chose to explore the reign of Muhammad bin Tughlaq in his play. So what are the sources for Tughlaq? the play that Karnad wrote, what are the historical documents that he might have accessed in the writing of this particular play. Among many other sources, we find that Tariq Firoz Shahi, a historical chronicle written by Ziauddin Barani, who spent almost 17 years at Tughlaq's court and finally died of self-imposed poverty, is actually the main source behind the play that Karnad writes. In the light of history, what exactly is Tughlaq? Let us try to summarize that. Tughlaq is based, one, on the life and story of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, who is the most controversial ruler of the Delhi Sultanate. Tughlaq is defined as a historical play because the chief protagonist is a character taken from history and the play documents a series of past events that took place during the reign of Tughlaq. Tughlaq can also be considered to be a political play as it represents the reign of a king and his various moves to unify the Hindus and the Muslims and establish a just kingdom in Delhi. The play mainly focuses on Tughlaq's two major decisions that had brought about his downfall. And these decisions are 1. To shift the capital from Delhi to Dalatabad as he thinks that Delhi is too near the border and easily uh, feasible for the invaders to attack, whereas Dalat Adbad is situated in the heart of the country. The second reason that seems to have been usually associated with his downfall is that Tughlaq's second major decision is to introduce copper currency in the place of silver currency because he notices that silver coins are becoming extremely limited in stock. The play also represents a psychological dilemma faced by the king Tughlaq. He goes through deep mental setbacks one after the other after he finds that he has been responsible for a number of murders. Tughlaq also attempts to reread the character of, uh, of this king and his reign and deals with a series of events that occurs during this period. Not only does Tughlaq contain a historical account of the reign of Tughlaq, but it also represents the very process of history making and the importance of history itself as a genre of narrative. Tughlaq offers a new uh, direction to the past as seen in the present. The contemporary relevance of the play Tughlaq is immense and it resembles uh, a particular period in post-colonial India, the Nehruvian era. Let us now consider the character of Tughlaq. Tughlaq is the dominant character and his character is fraught with a number of ambiguities. He is what he chooses to be and he is self-confident enough which we find absolutely present because of the truthfulness of his choice and the decisions that he makes. His choices are guided by best intentions, but his decisions, his ideas or his policies are continuously rebelled against and resisted by citizens who compel him to take a very harsh step, a number of harsh steps in fact, against his own citizens. 
The play enables the reader to question and subvert the dominant construction of Tughlaq's image as an intelligent but incapable ruler of the Delhi Sultanate by bringing out the positive aspects of his character and his best intentions. Now, Tughlaq represents also the creative side of the character of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. The so-called mad king is a poet, a philosopher and a great lover of history. His introspective nature comes to light when he questions his very identity as a king by raising a number of philosophical questions before himself. Now, Tughlaq is very often also read as a very modern play, making direct references to the here and the now, the time during which the play actually came about. What are these modern elements that we can study? Tughlaq can be considered as a modern play simply because it touches upon various aspects of our modern day existence. The play incorporates both symbolisms and allegories to represent the past. The existential choice in Tughlaq, his personality which is schizophrenic in some sense, these are some of the aspects which have given the play a modern touch. The two characters, Barani and Najib, represent the two selves that Tughlaq carries with him, that of a historian and a hardcore politician. The play also emphasizes on the outcome of the choices that Tughlaq will make. He makes all his choices and decisions with full knowledge and awareness, but it is the same choice or decision that is going to be responsible for his downfall. But he's a person who stands firm in his decisions despite his horrible outcomes that come about because of these decisions. But the citizens and his fellow men can hardly understand this farsightedness and will obviously oppose him. Now, although the play was not intended as a direct political allegory, its resemblance to the then contemporary situation cannot be overlooked. The same idea has been pointed out by UK Anantamurthy, one of the most important writers and critics of contemporary times. According to Anantamurthy, one of the main reasons that the play appealed mostly to the Indian audiences is that the play came out in the 1960s and seemed to reflect the political mood of disillusionment that followed the Nehruvian era of idealism in India. In one of his interviews, Karnad himself says that 22 years of Tughlaq's decline offers a striking parallel to the first two decades of the Indian independence of under Nehru's idealistic rule. But troubled leadership and Nehru were both remarkably like Tughlaq in, the, in, in, in terms of the propensity for failure despite an extraordinary intellect and a wonderful, philosophizing, sensitive personality. Aparna Dharvarkar has had occasion to point out some of the connections, some of the striking similarities between Tughlaq and Nehru. For Nehru, India was in his blood and there was much in, in her that instinctively thrilled him. He wanted his people to realize the hidden and stored energy in them that would help his people to move on. The same line of thinking is also noticeable in Tughlaq, who expresses the same desire for a transformative and unprecedented union with his people. Nehru adopts a secularist stance towards the citizens. His idea of Indian culture was an assimilative, secularist and pluralistic one and he was totally intolerant about religious orthodoxy. But in reality, that secularism never came. The same attempts have been made by Tughlaq too. But secular nationhood is far away. In a sense, Tughlaq's history gets repeated during the reign of Nehru. Both Tughlaq and Nehru try to unify the Hindus and the Muslims, but finally end up with a dissolution and chaotic quality.
Tukluk then we find is a sensitive portrayal of a visionary ruler who was progressive in his outlook but wanted to establish a political system based on equality irrespective of existing class caste and religious difference according to vn das tugluk is an objective but a detached study of an important era with mohammed bin tugluk at the center it is a dramatic interpretation of the processes of history in terms of an individual character having looked at tugluk let us consider the space that karnad occupies in the history of indian or contemporary indian uh, drama karnad in so many ways brings about a whole new epoch of writing uh, theater in the vernacular and then moving on and translating almost all his plays into english so that uh, a version that is available in kannada is immediately available almost uh, say after a lapse of a few months in english so that practically everybody uh, across the country is able to access that play having translated all his plays thus and becoming accessible to mostly everybody in the country and abroad uh is one of the reasons why the the visibility of karnad's theater is something that strikes us on the face the fact that he uses makes extensive use of mythology is another important aspect that we must not forget apart from his use of um of history and since we have already mentioned um a play like the dreams of tipu sultan it would be a useful exercise if students would also access that text and read uh, it in order to understand how he uses the processes of history in order to come to a certain kind of trajectory of thought how is history written for example and what happens to that particular phenomenon of a uh, history writing itself In the dreams of Tipu Sultan for example he he brings forward this very interesting dialogue between two modes of historical thinking the western one and the indian one one with the uh, colonel mackenzie the british historian in conversation with his collaborator uh, mohammed kirmani how does how does the way that indians think about history differ from the western historiographic template uh, so these are questions that actually are thrown up and discussed and uh, played out via a theatrical production in a play like uh, the dreams of tipu sultan for example what do dreams mean in history a western historian will say nothing but then with the indian historian kirmani dreams of tipu sultan recorded in a diary are probably the most valuable source of history that an indian historian like him could ever uh, desire to have uh, in terms of a record so these are specific kinds of examples that we can make references to when we are thinking of a play like tugluk and the entry point through which uh, karnad takes on his various sources and begins to interpret it in terms of a very modern and yes a very post colonial space as well because these questions would otherwise not have been thrown up at all and the fact that he also uses the figure of tugluk to read nehru is again something that makes the play an extremely well loved production as well a lot of critique of nehru is Uh, is seen in the play uh, the ideas that he sprouts are uh, in the idealisms the secularism um the vision that nehru seems to have which largely remains um something that will remain a vision and has not come into fruition uh is so strikingly similar to the mad king tugluks that uh, the allegory is actually not really far fetched in this module then we have close read the text by girish karnad tugluk it is a play a historical play and there are some specific kinds of questions that can be thrown up in regard to this 
reading of this play. The, the first question, of course, is that of history and the processes of history that Karnad has uh, applied and used and read and analyzed. He has also taken on a certain amount of allegorization. That is something that we need to keep in mind. Also, the act of writing and recording history, especially with the role of Barani in Tughlaq, uh, the narration of history itself, and uh, so on. Many of these issues will help the students to tackle some of the core issues that um, Karnad has thrown up in this play. Thank you.